Aloha. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. Very happy to be connecting with you today. It is April 16, I think. And it is a Tuesday. I think it's 16 because yesterday was the 15th. But in any case, I'm very happy to be joining with you today on today's live stream, my twice a week live stream. And for those just new tuning in, wondering if they want to stick around or not, this could be an interesting subject matter for you. Today I'll be focusing on understanding the difference between tolerance and understanding and acceptance of the differences in various religions and beliefs, uh, spiritual beliefs and whatnot. So for a lot of people there is quite a few um, misconceptions, there's quite a few dogmas, there's quite a few... Uh, uh, mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs that create separation in society. And uh, this live stream is designed to help um, bridge that gap and create less separation. So if that sounds of interest to you, I hope you stick around. And also click on the share button. Let other people know about this. <clears throat> there are quite a few out there that, um, that can be very, very uh, closed in their mindsets. Uh, not an open mind nor an open heart and hopefully we can find some shift and some value in that shift today so I encourage you to stick around if you're new and you'd like to stick around but can't uh, just like and subscribe and you can always come back and watch the videos because they become recordings at the end of this live stream <clears throat> so I always want to give credit to my teacher and spiritual father Master Zhigong Sha uh, I have been on a spiritual journey since the age of 18, have trained under two enlightened beings, and then came across Master Shaw, who very clearly to me was an enlightened being. And uh, after working through his 20 plus books and being under his tutelage uh, for the past 10 years, <coughs> it's, uh, it's truly a great honor to, to bring the various wisdoms that he has brought to humanity and to share those wisdoms. So thank you for joining everybody. So let's see who we've got here joining so far today. Aloha and welcome Kathy Arnold. Aloha and welcome to Lorraine Dolan. Welcome also to Lisa Carter. Welcome Heather Rasmussen. And welcome also to Linda Iloba. Aloha and welcome to Nola, uh, to Kristen Rojas. Thank you, Kristen, for your service. Welcome Maddie. Good to see you here, Maddie. Welcome Catherine O'Shea. And welcome also to Princess Lee and Sarah Marie, Angel Enoch. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for joining. Thank you for clicking on the share button. Because I'm no longer doing the live streams every day at the same time, Monday through Thursday, there's been a little bit of a fallout on people being here in a timely manner. <coughs> people are still adjusting to the time. So thank you for helping out with that. So uh, yesterday... Uh, completely off subject, but just something I'm happy about. Yesterday, my wife uh, received a letter from the immigration department saying that she is officially legal as a um, as a resident, a U.S. resident. That's not the same as U.S. citizen. That requires like five to ten years and jumping through a lot more hoops. But uh, you know, I married over three years ago, and uh, we've been going through all of their little hoops. And finally, she got the letter yesterday, so I'm happy about that. So welcome Janet Blair, welcome also to Ben, great to see you. <coughs> Drink some water here. I did two teachings already this morning <coughs> to my um, Open Spiritual Channels class, which is on week 11 of a 12-week program. It's very exciting because during the course of this 12-week program, I get to see them blossom, I get to see them uh, open their channels and have Valid, validating experiences. <clears throat> okay. Of course, I don't have any of this issue prior to going live. It's only when I go live that the <laughs> this pops up. It's always the way. And um, uh, but it was great because when they you know they go through the process of the steps of understanding the soul understanding the nature of the soul understanding the blockages the karma blockages and then understanding how to clear them and then going through the forgiveness practices and then doing the actual practices that do open the spiritual channels and then the validation of their spiritual channels being open so it's actually a, a really neat experience <coughs> to witness people going through that kind of growth in a 12-week cycle 
So thank you all for joining uh, and sharing. And I know some of you can't. Welcome Janet Blair, welcome Callisto. Uh, welcome Gabby, welcome Jennifer. Press Smith, welcome Seema AJ. <clears throat> so let us uh, go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul while we are waiting for the rest of the souls to join us. Placing our hands in soul light, soul service hand position. I'll invite in the beings of light. There are beloved divine creator. All layers of the divine, the Tao and the source. The soul of all masters and ascended masters, gurus, lamas, sifus, saints, buddhas, and bodhisattvas, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary, beloved Amitofu Kuan Yin, beloved Ganesha, beloved Krishna, all other beings of light, mentioned and unmentioned, <coughs> that have served our soul journeys. We love you, honor you, deeply respect you all. We invite your presence. To the soul of our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. All heavens, generals, and soldiers, heavens, animals, we love you, honor you, and appreciate you. We invite you to please join us. We invite the source soul song of love, peace, and harmony to please turn on, and we invite all souls and all universes to chant this source soul song of love, peace, and harmony with us as we connect heart to heart, soul to soul, release our blockages, become one with our soul journey. <clears throat> we ask that all of the beings of light bless the wisdom today, on releasing the differences of beliefs and belief systems, opening our heart and soul to understanding and, and um, honoring everyone's belief. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let us chant. Lula, Lula, Li. Lu la lu la la li, u la lu la li lu la, lu la li lu la, lu la li lu la. Wo ai wo xian er ling, wo ai ran ran li. <coughs> I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls. Together, love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> Excuse me. How, how, how. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, Maria Joy. Welcome, Tracy Lipai. Aloha, Shana Sug. Welcome, Phyllis. Welcome also to Sharon Dodd. And uh, Sinizana, welcome. Gabby, welcome also to uh, any other souls whose names I might have missed. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for clicking on that share button. Today, we are focusing on understanding the difference between tolerance and acceptance of different religious uh, beliefs and spirituality. <clears throat> now, in... In um, deciding to teach on this today, I was sitting in my desk and I looked up and I saw an image and it showed multiple beings of, of light uh, from different religious belief systems. And the message was, there is, um, there is no honoring of our various beliefs. There is uh, no tolerance and acceptance. <coughs> And so I decided to talk more about that today. Now, uh, if there was a poll, and I'm not asking for a poll, but if there was, because the majority of you watching are in the Western time zones, there may be more leaning towards the Western belief systems. There are those with 
Eastern belief systems, there are Middle East belief systems, there are belief systems more than we can account for. There are belief systems in the Rainwood Forests that have nothing to do that are even remotely close to what you and I understand. Does that make it any less <coughs> lovable or believable? At one point about three years ago, I was at an event. Uh, it was a five-mile walk or something like that. And there were some booths there with people selling their foods and their waters and things like that. And One of the booths there was a uh, religious booth. And so um, I was kind of walking by and they said, you know, a hook question, do you believe in God or something like that? And it was a young girl, 18, 19. So I decided to listen to her. <coughs> and... She started uh, repeating things that had been repeated to her that were restrictive and closed-minded and judgmental on many levels. Um, it was basically chosen one stuff, things like that. <clears throat> and so I was trying to figure out how do I gently explain to her that this kind of a information is not holistic and not honoring of everybody on the planet because she's early in her youth right she she has a malleable mind and that's pretty obvious since she's espousing something that that um is not fully well rounded in its overall information so i shared with her i said you know the wisdom that you're sharing with me although possibly accurate may have a few uh, limitations <clears throat> what you're sharing is only these people that think this way um, will make it to, to, to back to the source. I said, um, you know, what about the other 5 billion people on the planet that don't even know about this belief system? They have not even heard about it. There's many in the, in the rainforest. There's many in the uh, ancient lands. There's many that are, are made available only to them uh, teachings that are nothing like the teachings you're sharing with me. They don't even know about them. I said, does that mean those other five billion people are not chosen, so they're, therefore they're not going to go? That the, the source that you're speaking about has forsaken them? <clears throat> I said, you know, I'm not telling you what to believe or not believe. I'm asking you to consider that uh, a creator that says, I love my right arm, I love these two billion or two million souls, but these five or six or seven or ten billion, I'm not interested in. They can, they, they, they're not, you know, special. Um, I don't believe that the Creator uh, thinks like that. And I just left her with that. And she had a very uh, wide open eye after that. So I bring that up as an example. Now the question becomes, uh, why? <clears throat> why do we attach to a certain belief system? And there's nothing wrong with it, by the way. Does it matter what you believe? I honor at 100%, and it's important to honor everybody's 100%, no matter what their belief system is. When we honor other people's belief systems and they don't honor ours, that can create problems as well. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to talk about first why it's important to honor our own and why it's important to honor others and why we why it's important to us to have one some of us have a belief system that there is no such thing as a god that there is no religion that's okay too why then is it okay there is no god there's no such thing i'm 100 percent atheist why is that okay that somebody has that perspective why is it okay that somebody is like you know everybody else dies except these special 144,000? why is it okay for people to have those beliefs why do we need to have acceptance, which is a lot more than tolerance, of where everybody's at? The reason why is because all of them came from the same source. That person out there on the street corner, jumping up and down the pole, saying, you know, the end is near, or whatever that person, anywhere in the world, whatever their belief system is, <clears throat> is exceedingly important for exactly where they're at on their soul journey. You don't know that maybe they have to be there doing that espousing of that belief. Because in their world, if they don't, they could die the next day. It could be that in their belief system, if they don't do that, 
maybe, you know, that spiteful creator will take them. But that is where their belief system is at that moment in time. How many of you have changed your belief systems over the course of time? How many of you have become much more tolerant and accepting of other people's beliefs? Where early on, when you were 13, 14, 15, 18, 19, 20, you may have had very jaded, specific, dogmatic beliefs. Your mind was not as wide open as it is now. How many of you still hold on to uh, angers and criticisms? Ah, oh, they're Jewish. Oh, the Islamic, blah, 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 right? Um, a lot of it has to do with what is spoon-fed us from the moment of birth. And when we uh, are born, we're, we are born into typically a family scenario. Maybe some of you were adopted. <clears throat> but we are born into a family scenario. And we are um, told that this is what we are supposed to believe. And some of us are told, don't believe anything, but we're told what to believe. This becomes then uh, a, a foundation, major, major pillars. And this is very important to understand so that you can be understanding and respectful of other people's beliefs. Because no different than when, when somebody starts butting up against you, and challenging your beliefs, how does that make you feel, right? Uh, for me, um, it used to make me feel very irritated and, and defensive. Um, you know, now I'm over that, but most of the time that's the case when somebody starts arguing against our belief system. Why do we have a resistance? Why do we want to defend it? Why do we want to tell them they're, they're wrong and I'm right? The reason why is simple. If our belief system is derailed, if our individual belief system is challenged, then it's the same as challenging our entire foundation. Because our belief, whatever it might be, in no God, in a God, in a special God, in, uh, 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 in Mother Earth only, <clears throat> uh, it doesn't matter what that belief is that's very important for that individual at that time it sustains their foundation if that foundation is damaged or uprooted by um, a disrespectful or dishonoring communication then you could actually create karma now there's a difference between having a communication that is respectful and honoring and mind opening and having a communication that is um, derogatory and purposeful in its intent to uproot whatever that person's beliefs may be. Some that are very dogmatic in their belief systems would, would probably argue, you know. Some who, who will stumble across this will call me Satan because I'm saying be open-minded and, and they're very dogmatic in their belief. I honor them where they're at. That's where they're at. I can't, I'm not going to judge them. That's where they're at. If I checked in with them 10 years from now, it's highly unlikely they would be in that same position. Highly unlikely. They will have had growth. Their mind will have opened more. <clears throat> we hold on to our beliefs with such staunchness, such um, uh, intensity, that if it is challenged, we become very defensive and try to protect it. One of the reasons why is because it is a foundation of our personality. If you uproot my belief, you are uprooting my personality. You're saying that my choices were wrong choices. You're saying that my beliefs are wrong beliefs and that everything that I put my faith into, <clears throat> which is you know up to half of my existence is faith, possibly more, possibly less, that that uh, is no longer relevant. When somebody gets challenged, they will fight back like a rat in a corner. And it's because you're not challenging their belief. You're challenging part of their entire foundation. You're rattling their cage. So no different than we don't want that happening to us, we need to be not only tolerant, but accepting of where other people's beliefs are. Other people's beliefs are very important. What if the person who is now an, is an Islamic fundamentalist was in the past a Christian extremist in a previous life? What if the person who is now a Christian extremist was a person who was um, 
on the opposite end in a previous time. They were a, a uh, non-believer of, of any creator. We don't understand that individual soul journey. Do you get that? Who am I and who are you to say that we are the judge and jury and the intelligent one that knows what is correct for that person's soul journey? <laughs> that, that is like the hugest ego response ever. And yet there are so many that walk the streets today that are more than happy to tell you what is good for your soul journey. <clears throat> they are creating karma. Because they are forcing opinions upon others. The person who is a fundamentalist extremist now could have been a, a complete against God before, against Creator before, a non-believer before. Why such wide swings? Why would there be a complete non-believer in one lifetime and a complete fundamentalist extremist on the other side? Two opposite lifetimes. Because what happens? Yin and Yang. They're finding their way to a healthy balance. They're finding their way to, um, to a larger, holistic, what might be referred to as a complete and divine understanding of the oneness of all things. It is my belief, certainly you don't have to agree, that our Creator is non-judgmental, loves all souls equally and unconditionally, and that includes the ones that murder and rape and kill, and the ones that uh, run around the world teaching humanity how to, how to save themselves, the ones that preach very specific orthodox beliefs, the ones that blow themselves up in the name of Allah, um, might be hard for you to grasp, but it is my personal understanding, again, you don't have to agree, that the Creator loves all of these souls equally. And one of the reasons why I've come to that understanding <clears throat> is a simple understanding that everything came from the same source. Now, in that coming from the same source, everything was given free will, and some souls chose unpleasant choices, and they're still wallowing in that unpleasant place of being lost and separate and very um, service to self. But it doesn't mean that a uh, creator has forbidden them and, and uh, said, I don't love them. Again, it's much like the creator saying, I love the right side of my body, but I hate the left side of my body. Everything came from the same source. To think that the source would be judgmental or critical of its creation would be the opposite of all that has been taught in virtually every single belief system out there that speaks of love. <clears throat> there are those that spend quite a bit of time worshiping the opposite of love. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me turn, close the window because I'm hearing some extra noise. And um, devil worshiping, blah, blah, blah. So are you saying we need to honor those? We need to accept those? We need to tolerate those? <clears throat> well, it's very, very hard, isn't it? It's very... Uh, it can definitely make somebody quite unhappy and um, hateful to witness or hear or read about those things. Uh, very easy to go to the thoughts of hang, hanging somebody by their neck. Or worse, uh, if we knew that they did some very unpleasant things to other humans. But in the nature of things, <clears throat> again, we don't understand. Why is it that soul? Why did those things uh, happen in their life where they ended up in that arena, in that uh, set of conditions? We don't know. We truly don't have the vision to understand. How does the uh, pilot fly from one continent to another across a massive ocean? They can't see. They certainly can't see. 
All they can do is trust the systems to get them from A to B. And then they land. <clears throat> As souls on a soul journey, awakening more and more every day, the path of the enlightened ones, according to the various um, documentation that is out there for as long as we can trace it back, those that reach higher levels of enlightenment, higher levels of dimension, higher levels of frequency, whatever verbiage you want to apply to this, those that reach those levels <coughs> are loving. They are compassionate. They are free entirely and completely of judgment. They have reached the highest levels of enlightenment, which mind enlightenment is higher than soul enlightenment. And mind enlightenment is being completely free of all judgment in its entirety. That's not an easy thing to accomplish. So the wisdom that I'm wanting to share with you today is more about what can we do for our lives and our soul journey <clears throat> to avoid creating imbalances on our soul journey, karma, whatever you want to call it, Avoid judgment and criticism, lack of tolerance for what others and their belief systems are. And at the same time, uh, when and if somebody comes to us and wishes to share their uh, belief or force their belief upon us, we also need to be able to reply in a loving, conscious, and considerate manner. One of the ways you can do that is simply by stating, I'm so grateful that you are so uh, connected to the wisdom you want to share with me, that you believe in it so much that you want to change my perspective. I appreciate that you have such great um, strength in your trust and belief in what you have. And this is perfect for you. I have no judgment around that, and I'm so happy that you have found something that serves you. Just as much as that serves you, what I have found is serving me at this point in time. I have no desire to argue or debate. <clears throat> I wish to honor yours, and I wish that you honor mine. Can we be friends and talk about something else, please? Now, this is a way in which you can... Uh, not create conditions in which there is argument or dissension and instead create conditions in which there is value. Now, if that person wants to keep talking, then talk about those things that are positive and of value. I would love to understand why this is of great value to you. And you can share it with me in a way that is not trying to sell me <clears throat> why I should flip sides, but just so I can understand why it brings such great value to you because I want to support you and what brings value to you. You can do that. That's also a wonderful way to honor them and their beliefs. That might cause them to go, hmm, maybe I should ask why this belief system to them is important to them. And then they give you an opportunity to share and they open their mind <laughs> and have a greater understanding of why what you have chosen to follow is important to you. The more we open ourselves to a wider series of people's beliefs, religious beliefs, spiritual beliefs, the more we open our hearts to these aspects that are current, quite large in life actually, the faster we as a whole race are going to move towards oneness. Oneness literally means the opposite of separation. Oneness is not possible where there is separation. <clears throat> separation means yin and yang. Separation means I am right, you are not. Separation means there is uh, a lack of agreement to agreeably agree. Oneness is 
best viewed from a very high perch. So if you bring yourself to the elevation of your creator, visually speaking, and look upon the over 1,000 belief systems on Mother Earth, over 7,000 languages, you can start to see from a much larger perspective that there is no judgment or criticism from Creator. There is just great happiness and joy with the diversity that life brings. There is a great experience that Creator has from the very large diversity <clears throat> that each belief system offers. One of the things that we can do to move from tolerance to acceptance is to talk to someone that has an opposite or unique belief. And we can ask them from a place of curiosity to not go down the judgment road. Just be curious. Because this allows you to open your mind. And it also, you will discover, allows you to see commonalities between various beliefs. Now, sad but true, <clears throat> there is the human aspect on Mother Earth that has destroyed and um, tainted, uh, in many cases, very a lot of taint to various belief systems that are out there. Uh, and this tainting looks like the manipulation of high-level, high-frequency words, sentences, phrases, and guidances that were left by great beings. And those words, sentences, phrases, and information has been twisted to create conditions of control and conditions of manipulation. <clears throat> but those fall away with time. And it is the awareness of that that also allows us to go from tolerance to acceptance. Because even those souls that twisted for control, authentic, valuable belief systems that were brought by great beings and great masters, even those who twisted this information, we need to love them. Because they are no different than us. They are a soul that is on their journey. <clears throat> they are a soul that is looking to find their way home, no different than us. And every person, including us, will go from uh, the darkness to the light at some point in time. Now, what I'm about to say may or may not come true. It's just based on information that's currently available to me. But if it does come true, it will be quite um, traumatic. Traumatic is a good word. <clears throat> For virtually everyone watching here, it probably won't be too traumatizing. Most of you are aware and awake. And again, it may not come true. Um, if it does, what will be shared with the, the general public in the news cycle and in humanity will only be about 10% of the truth. So again, what I'm about to share may or may not happen and may or may not be shared to the public. There is current information in the current uh, society today that there are and has been for over 700 years extreme and long-standing control of humanity uh, by those who utilize belief systems and religions to control. And there is information that may validate <coughs> um, this truth being exposed in a very um, uncomfortable way by some at the very top of the of various belief systems at the very top being exposed as false or um, manipulative, uh, possibly quite a bit worse than that. 
if that comes to light, <clears throat> it will be a very important stage for humanity because it will represent a massive shift from darkness to light. It will represent a massive shift of awakening. It will represent that um, those that are fighting to bring autonomy and um, oneness back to humanity are having some successes. Part of the dilemma with this, again, if it comes to light, if you see it, will be that those that have been controlling <coughs> belief systems and everything that basically keeps um, you and I from awakening, all humanity from awakening, has been happening for a long, 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 long time. We all go through various degrees of awakening, but this has been happening a long time that those same ones that have been trying to keep humanity from waking up, literally, spiritually waking up, literally, um, they also control the news cycles. They control what is printed and what is shown on the TVs. And so there are quite a few that are still very, very asleep. And <clears throat> if those at the top of some of the belief systems are exposed and are found uh, and are tried as false or charlatan, etc., and that is proven, then it still may not be known to the general public because of the control over the um, communication systems that are out there. So if you only hear 10%, know that that's <laughs> the top surface, that there's the other 90% that if you can imagine the worst, that's, that's probably true. So it's very sad, and I, uh, uh, it's very sad that <clears throat> true, authentic teachings from great masters has been tweaked over time and manipulated over time to create uh, ostracization, judgment, criticalness. Um, I'm right, you're wrong, mine's better, yours is not. But this is what's happened over the course of time because it creates separation, and separation creates control. In order, to re in order to move ourselves as a humanity, as a society, back towards oneness, we must individually and collectively teach these same wisdoms. We must individually and collectively move from tolerance to acceptance and understanding from multiple levels. I accept and understand this is what's perfect for you and your belief system at this time. I accept and understand that I can't see your soul and your journey, that you might be this very unpleasant person with this very unpleasant belief because that's what's needed for you and it's opposite of something you were doing over here to help bring you, that soul, back to balance, which will help the entirety of all souls. This is a much higher perspective. You have to look at things from this higher eagle eye view. <clears throat> I, ex I choose to move from tolerance to acceptance because I don't have the whole picture. Because I was not you, that child that grew up in that Islamic neighborhood with probably a very beautiful mother and father that probably wasn't talking about blowing themselves up with bombs. They probably talked about feeding the neighbors and taking care of each other. But over the course of time, various things and belief systems are used to manipulate individuals for control. So we need to have a much bigger perspective and have honoring for everybody's belief system, no matter where they're at. What about those that have uh, complete animosity towards Creator? You know, they're, they're antagonists. They're, they're just, you know, they just have zero belief. They're perfectly where they need to be. Okay, They could have been a religious zealot in a previous time, taking people down a path that was actually hurting them. Now they need to go to the opposite side so that they can find that balance. All of us mostly need to recognize that if we challenge others' beliefs, even in our thoughts, we are creating a level of imbalance in the bigger picture. Why? Because it's no different than somebody coming up to us and standing in our face saying, you are wrong, your belief is wrong, blah, 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 blah. How does that feel? When you give a negative thought about somebody's belief, what is important to them? That thought has very little difference than the actual verbal words. They both carry power. They both have karmic circumstances. Oneness, awakening, 
Acceptance versus tolerance is all about being in a place of love. All of this boils back to that one simple teaching that every great master has in all of their teachings. Love. Why does every great master bring that same teaching? Because every great master was very connected to the source, the creator, which is, at least in my belief, the purity of 100% love. We are too. At our level of soul, at our level of origination, we are too. But we have swayed, no different than anybody else, away from that central point of pure love. And we are all in our process of finding our way back, no different than our neighbors, our friends, our brothers, our sisters, the other souls that are out there in other countries. So to have an intolerance for them, to listen to the manipulative news, the Islamist blah, 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 again, right? Syria this, Syria that. Hate, hate, hate. Ask yourself, what is the purpose? Does this assist my love? Does this assist my oneness? Turn it off. Awareness is important. Giving attention to and having our energies and frequencies impacted negatively, that's what those that have been controlling want. The only way they can maintain control is through separation and through information. You have control over both. You have control of the information you allow into your eyes, your ears, and your energetic field. You have control not only of the information, but of what you communicate with others, <clears throat> what you think. Become, remember, you get that remember? Because we're all from the one source, the one member. Remember. Find your way back to that source. Sep choose to not align to anything that feels controlling to you. Choose to not align to anything that creates separation in thought, word, and action. It is very, very important to remember that love <clears throat> is always the answer. Love melts all blockages. When somebody, if somebody, says something derogatory, negative, very hard to be in a place of love. But that's probably what they need most at that time. So we need to honor ourselves, love ourselves, disallow that negativity to enter, and then love them. Even if it doesn't shut them up at that moment, the love will soften them, and they might not come back to bother you because <clears throat> they just, um, they don't like, you don't listen to their ranting and raving. Your love kind of, <laughs> was like sandpaper to them. Right? Love melts all blockages. Opening our heart to others is the key. So we're going to do a practice now for opening our heart to all the different belief systems that are out there. I'm so happy to see that a lot of you don't pay attention to those news. You, you're very aware. That's good. <clears throat> so let us sit up straight. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to do a forgiveness practice with all of those in all time that we have ever created separation with and discord. So if you're comfortable, you can do this practice with me. Please repeat if it is comfortable. Dear my beloved divine creator, dear all the souls of humanity, all souls in all time, my name is Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher, Paul Fletcher. State your name three times. <clears throat> I wish to most humbly and sincerely apologize for all time, from the moment of my creation to this moment now, if I 
or my ancestors have created separation. Separation in <coughs> separation by inappropriate, hurtful, judgmental, critical thoughts, words, and actions, especially around your beliefs, your religious or spiritual orientation. If I or my ancestors was judgmental, critical, if we have been in a position <clears throat> of strength or power and forced you to change your beliefs, brought dogmatic teachings and rules, forced them upon you in any way, if I or my ancestors killed you, threw you in jail, or have publicly humiliated you because of your beliefs. If I or my ancestors <coughs> have been intolerant and not respectful, of whatever was important to you to believe in. I deeply, deeply apologize. If I or my ancestors have steered you down the path away from love, towards darkness, towards anything that was away from oneness, Again, from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely apologize and ask your forgiveness. I ask my beloved Creator for forgiveness as well for any times that I may have <clears throat> in this or any lifetime yelled, screamed, kicked, blamed you. If I have done these things to you, my beloved Creator, please forgive me for my separation and my separation thoughts, words, and actions. Please bless me, my beloved Creator, to further develop my acceptance and oneness awakening. Please bless me, my beloved Creator, to release negative thinking, negative mindsets and beliefs, patterns of judgment and criticalness that create separation from love and oneness. I am very grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And as we chant the words divine love for a few minutes, Share your love, spread your love to all humanity. See various belief systems. Honoring each other, bowing their heads to each other with gratitude. Let us chant divine love, sending our love with oneness. Divine love. Divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love, divine love. Divine love, divine love, divine love, <coughs> divine love, divine love, divine love, divine. Divine love, divine love, divine love.
Let us bow our heads to all of the souls of humanity, all the different beliefs, all the different colors, clothes, races, styles of communication. We honor each and every soul as they all come from the same source. We honor each and every race, religion, color, and belief because we very likely may have been any one of those race, religions, colors, and beliefs. And there's a possibility that we may become any one of those race, beliefs, colors, and more in our return to oneness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. So thank you. We've got some new folks that have joined here. I haven't had a chance to acknowledge you. Uh, so welcome, Rosetta. Welcome, Susan. Welcome, Janet. Welcome also, Colleen. Aloha to, uh, to Davey and Anne-Marie. Welcome. Aloha also to... Estelita, Terry Zink. Welcome, Julia. Welcome also to Karim. Welcome, Deborah. And thank you for your comments. I did read them as I went through. I just couldn't break the flow of the communication. <clears throat> so if you enjoyed this, then practice it. That's the key. The wisdom, we already know. We have to bring it into our lives because we are the emissaries. We are the ones that must go out and make a difference. Uh, even if that's one person at a time. Let us teach others to move from tolerance to acceptance. When somebody comes up to us and wants to share their belief systems, <clears throat> please remind them uh, that you are of great honoring of theirs, and it's important to honor yours. I see several saying that Facebook just reminded you of where I have been. I apologize. I don't have any control over it. I have Almost 3,000 friends now on Facebook only shows 30 or 10 percent. Roughly 300 of you are notified. But please make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, you can always come to my um, my uh, website, asohealer.com, asohealer.com. And if you go to the uh, blog, I have recorded there access of, of all of my live streams on audio, so you can listen uh, that way and catch up. Okay. Uh, so you don't miss anything. But thank you. I'm so grateful to see uh, some of you coming back. Um, for those that are new, a uh, little heads up. I am teaching some live classes coming very soon, not on Facebook live stream. Uh, there will be a 52-week self-healing program that will be released towards the end of next month. I will be doing a cancer program also around the same time. And I will be doing an open spiritual channels program, 12 weeks to open your spiritual channels. Uh, including uh, the possibility of opening your third eye or further developing it, being able to hear heaven clearly, uh, clearing blockages in the heart center, the kundalini, and so much more. So some of these courses I've taught already, the Open Spiritual Channels, taught it twice, had over uh, 20 students each time. Very, very successful course, lots of positive results. So uh, look forward to these courses. Keep an eye on me on my website, and I'll will serve you shortly. You can always contact me directly through Facebook Messenger uh, or through my email, asoulhealer at yahoo.com. So thank you, Kristen, for posting my information for people to contact me if they need to. So let us offer our gratitude to heaven. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. Gong song, gong song, gong song. I will be back Thursday, three hours earlier than this time, 9 o'clock Hawaii time. This one's starting 12 o'clock Hawaii time. So if you want to see me on Thursday, I'll be back, 9 a.m. Hawaii time. Love you, love you, love you. See you then. Bye-bye, everybody.